Flipper Zero, one of the most sought after gadgets of 2023. So why would you want this cool little radio hacking device that pretends to be a Tamagotchi? In this video, we're gonna find out what the Flipper does, what the Flipper doesn't do, and should you get one? So let's start off with, why would you want one of these things? I think it's fair to say that there's been a lot of social media coverage of these of people doing stuff that they shouldn't be doing with these things. And that has drawn a lot of attention and made this such a success. In particular, I'm talking about the popular test of the charge flap hack. At the touch of a button, you can emulate the signal that testers use to open their charging flaps. It's actually pretty funny. But that's not the best reason to get one of these things. This thing is a powerful RF multi-tool. It's a bit like having a multimeter for RF, radio frequency. So let's have a look at some of the cool things you can do with this device. Look, this is the home screen. It kind of defaults to like a Tamagotchi dolphin. It's pretty funny. But basically I've got a key fob here for something. I'm not gonna tell you what it is. I'll show you that later. All you need to know is what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna read the signal from the key fob. So you can go into this thing here, frequency analyzer, and you can basically just push the button on here and it will register the frequency on there. So that's pretty cool in itself. You can test if a key fob's working, if you don't know, whether the batteries are flat or whatever. But also more than that, you can actually capture the signal generated by this and each individual button as well, and then replay it. So you can actually use this as your remote. So if you have multiple key fobs in your life, you can store all of your key fobs onto this and then you've only got to take one device with you. Okay, look, it is a bit bigger than everything else, but it's a pretty cool concept. So to store the key presses, you just go into the read section, hit that, it starts scanning, and then when you push a button on the remote, it actually grabs the specific code. So each button has got a different code. You can see, 0C, C0, 03, and the final one. It's incredibly cool to be able to do that. Now, once you've stored those commands, you can actually make them into a remote and then you can trigger those using the flipper without the key fob. So here's the remote I made. It's actually for my Renault Twizy to change driving modes and different settings. It's pretty interesting that, isn't it? But before you go and get worried and concerned that someone's gonna break into your car because they'll just literally grab your key fob code, it doesn't quite work like that with key fobs. Fortunately, there's a lot of security involved in those involving rolling codes and everything else. What you can do with a flipper though, and what some people shouldn't be doing <laughs> is actually trying to do it with this device. And there are ways where you can actually try to do it. It won't work. What it will end up doing is it'll end up most likely locking out a key fob for the, for the owner of the actual car. So don't go and try it on your own car because it will have a hefty bill replacing the key fob for it. And don't go and do it to somebody else because yeah, it's just not a nice thing to do. When the car thieves do it, they do it a different way. And that is why you shouldn't leave your key fob near your window in your house. Just basically tuck it away somewhere in a drawer or even better, put it in a Faraday box, basically a radio shield box. And that will make sure that the signal from the key fob cannot be picked up outside the house. And another thing, fortunately, the car manufacturers are getting wise to this now, so they're starting to put in extra security features to make sure this doesn't happen. But I still don't think Tesla have secured their battery flap yet. I will. Other cool things you can do with this, because it's got NFC built in, is actually read cards. So you can actually just read cards like this, and then you can store that data. Even credit cards. So it's a good thing a lot of people are using their phones now to make payment rather than cards, right? Wrong. It's crazy that on this particular Android phone that I've got, all you've got to do is have the phone on, touch the flip on the back, and it will just literally take the card details. Whilst it is really bad that you can extract the long card number and the expiry date with a flipper on any phone that's got this enabled, you can't actually use it to make payments because there is a missing security element. So that is at least one good thing. It's still bad that the whole number can be extracted though. I think there needs to be some extra security steps. Apple phones, you have to hit the button a couple of times, I think on the side to enable enable that card payment to happen. So it seems like at least they've put measures in place. Another thing, because this has 125 kilohertz RFID, you can scan pet tags as well. Oh, she didn't like that. So, so far we've seen a few things that the flipper can and can't do. And I think it's fair to say that if you saw someone out and about with a flipper, I wouldn't be too concerned because the bad guys are gonna be using other stuff. They're not gonna be using this sort of thing. You know, this is what we call ethical hacking. It's finding exploits in things to then obviously make them aware so that then, you know, people can kind of, manufacturers can fix those problems. That is what we want. And the community behind this thing is absolutely brilliant. Look, I've just literally just made a little temperature sensor just by plugging in this um, sensor on the top. 
and there's already a bit of software ready to go. It's so cool. There's so many possibilities with this thing. It's a bit like a kind of new age Arduino. So let's have a look at some more features. So this has got infrared. It's a blooming good infrared transmitter receiver as well. It's really powerful. So with this, you can actually kind of go into um, where well, you can analyze infrared signals as well, which is pretty cool. Um, you can also, you know, use this as a universal remote. Now, the way this works is it will literally cycle through all of the commands it knows um, as used for the on signal, on and off signal of, um, of TV. So basically, if we just let it, let it go on its way, it will just cycle through all the power commands. There you go, and the TV comes on. And actually, if you leave it, what it will do is it will then get to the off command. So basically, it will just kind of turn it, turn the TV off. Usually, it's around somewhere around now. It turns off. There you go, and it goes off. So... <laughs> It's just absolutely crazy. So you can also change the channel, change the volume, you know, mute, do all of that stuff. And you don't even need to know the manufacturer or any of the codes for the TV. It will just literally use its database that it's got inside it to just cycle through every possible TV in one foul swoop. It's amazing. And that work for TVs, audio devices, projectors, fans, air conditioning. How often have you been somewhere and there's air condition blasting and you want it to be turned off, but you can't find the remote anywhere? There you go. The Flipper also has Bluetooth and Bluetooth LE, so it can do loads of cool stuff like act as a remote control. There you go, I've just added a mouse pointer to my Android phone. And there's also another spammy, hacky thing that's going around on social media, again, which is basically where this thing can spoof out Bluetooth LE beacons and let iPhones know that there's devices in the area that aren't actually really there. And it kind of locks up the iPhone. It's, it's really not good, that one. So we can see there's loads of cool stuff you can do with the Flipper as a standalone unit in itself. But where it gets really cool, because this thing's got GPIO, it's basically like an expansion port. So you can start putting on extra boards like this Wi-Fi development board. So this is a board you can buy. I think it's a copy of the original Flipper Zero Wi-Fi board. But basically you can just pop that on the top there like that. And then it can do loads of other stuff. Like we can go into the GPIO section of the flipper here and then go into um, Wi-Fi Marauder. Now, this is a separate part of the firmware. You'd have to update the firmware to be able to do this. Um, but this allows you to basically pen test, penetration test your network um, and obviously other people's, but you shouldn't really do other people's. But this allows you to do quite a few cool things if you're into testing like Wi-Fi networks, testing penetration of Wi-Fi networks, stuff like that. So you can scan for APs. You can do numerous things like you can actually attack Wi-Fi networks with this as well, um, which I wouldn't advise doing unless it's your own network. Now I'll show you that in action quickly. I've got these lights which are one of the only things that is connected to my Wi-Fi network in 2.4 gigahertz mode because this particular Wi-Fi board only works in 2.4 gigahertz mode. It doesn't work in 5.8. So you can only pen test and experiment with stuff in the 2.4 gigahertz range. That is a drawback. What I can quickly show you here on my own Wi-Fi network is this Flipper Zero with the Wi-Fi board de-authenticating my lights off of my network. What does that mean? Well, let's just see. So if we hit that, that will start the deal authentication. You get a red light there and basically watch this. So in a second, you should see these lights basically just get completely disconnected from my network. So you see, it's just not one of them off. Now they've all gone completely. If we just stop this and the lights have gone off. <laughs> They're all, everything's going kind of wild now. But if we stop this now, and you see, they pretty instantly come back. The other one will come back in a second as well. There you go. It's mad that, isn't it? But this has been going on since the beginning of time, guys, like since Wi-Fi existed. So, you know, this is not a new thing. You've always been able to do the authentication um, pen tests on Wi-Fi networks. Um, you know, and obviously unscrupulous people can do it to bring whole Wi-Fi networks down. Now, Wi-Fi has kind of evolved and the security measures on the latest Wi-Fi networks um, are a lot better. So it is quite an eye opener that I was able to do this on my Sky broadband, which is just a very common um, broadband setup. I could knock off 2.4 gig devices um, just using the flipper. Now, obviously most things on a Wi-Fi network are connected to the higher band, the five gigahertz band. Like for example, when your phone connects to your Wi-Fi network at home, it will try and connect to the five gigahertz band because it gets a, a bigger a bigger bandwidth basically to allow more data to flow. But stuff at the limit of your Wi-Fi range, so if you've maybe got like a ring doorbell or something like that, that might be defaulting to the 2.4 gig band because it's outside hanging on the door and the signal's weak. You know, something like this could knock that ring doorbell out 
I mean, obviously, I think it's probably unlikely people are going to do this because if someone's going to try and, you know, try and avoid your cameras these days, because there's cameras everywhere, most criminals just stick a mask on. So that's kind of covered some of the things that you might have seen on, on social media, people doing um, with the flipper and saying, oh, you know, you'd be able to do this and it works and you're going to cause crazy havoc. You know, yeah, it is possible to sort of cause mild havoc with this thing, but if you're not going to buy this thing, take it out of the box, turn it on and start, you know, causing massive problems for people. Um, because you need to, you still need to know what you're doing. So why have one of these things then? Well, as I said at the beginning of the video, it's like having a multimeter for radio frequency. And because I'm a licensed amateur radio operator, as I know some of you guys are as well, because you follow the channel, um, it's just an absolutely brilliant tool to have. And one of my favorite features of the Flipper that I keep finding myself going back to on a daily basis now is the Spectrum Analyzer feature. It's absolutely brilliant. So you can basically just pull up a huge, pretty big chunk of bandwidth on here and analyze analyze the signal so you can see where, where stuff is. Now, for most of you, you're gonna be like, oh, big deal, what's all that about? But for the hams amongst us, you'll know how handy this sort of thing can be. So here it is picking up the signal from my Icom ID52 there. Unfortunately, this won't demodulate FM, so you can't actually listen to any audio transmissions or capture audio transmissions. It's purely only capturing digital, which is a bit of a shame but it is what it is. And the quoted frequency range of the flipper is from 300 megahertz to 900 megahertz. But for some strange reason, I've found that this particular one, I don't know why, but it doesn't seem to be picking up anything in the 446 megahertz band. So it kind of tails off at about 40, 440. I don't know if that's a region specific thing. I haven't really looked into it that far yet. Um, but yeah, it doesn't seem to go any higher than 446 in that band. But then obviously if you scroll up to the other bands up the top, it will actually start picking up um, in, I, I haven't tested this completely, but, but it's definitely picking up signals in the 868 megahertz, like ISM band. Um, and I've seen some signals in, you know, up, up at 900 megahertz as well. So if any of you guys have got one of these, let me know in the comments if you've, you're finding the same and maybe you've got a solution to kind of fix it. So that just about sums this one up, guys. I absolutely love this device. I think it's brilliant. I'm going to use it all the time. I am using it all the time. Um, but yeah, if you're thinking of getting this to cause loads of problems and <laughs> stop hacking stuff, then yeah, probably don't bother because it will get boring pretty quickly. Because once you've done the Tesla door thing and some of the other things on social media, it's, you're going to be bored with it. So yeah, don't be a dick. Learn to hack properly and I'll catch you next time.